All right, well, today we're gonna to be doing some upgrades to our new tow rig, as well as our gooseneck race trailer here, and then testing them both out, seeing how they both perform. Now, that being said, we bought this truck recently, and it just did a 2,000 mile trip to New Jersey and back from Florida flawlessly no issues but that being said we're car guys we're always tinkering we're always upgrading there's always room for improvement and we've got a pretty decent list of things to do this truck and we're knocking them out one by one so after the last trip we already got one upgrade knocked out and that was installing this edge cts3 monitor here so this gives us all of our gauges, more gauges than we can get and access on here. But also we now have an EGT monitor. So we put our EGT probe in the manifold right back there. And that's gonna give us a pre-turbo EGT reading, which is what we want to tune off of. So we left this truck in the stock tuning completely stock for the whole trip. And it did good, but it definitely was lacking a bit in the power department. Now that we have the EGT sensor and we can monitor that, we can turn the power up a little bit and make sure we don't overdo it by watching our EGT. So that's a big upgrade. And with that done, it's time to move on to some reliability upgrades that we have planned. Once we get those done, we can get hooked up to the trailer, pull it out, do the upgrades we have planned for it. And then we're gonna take the whole thing on a trip and test it out and see how it does. Should be a pretty satisfying little project here start to finish. So that being said, gotta get this thing pulled in the bay and uh, dive in. All right, so before we took our trip, we went ahead and did oil, oil filter, as well as both fuel filters, just to be on top of the kind of regularly scheduled programming maintenance. You never know, when you get a new vehicle, it's always good to kind of service everything and make sure it is all up to date. Because for all you know, they didn't change it for the last 40,000 miles. So we did that, all of that as well. But one thing we didn't get in time, and we have now, is this RevMax transmission thermostat bypass. So factory, there's a thermostat that basically blocks the transmission flow back from the transmission cooler so that the transmission will warm up faster. And once it gets to a certain temp, seems to be about 174, it'll then open it up and allow the cool fluid to flow through and cool everything down. So this basically eliminates that. There is no thermostat. It just allows fluid to flow into the cooler and out of the cooler back to the transmission at all times. Now, the reason for that is because the stock ones are problematic and prone to sticking shut. If they stuck open, it wouldn't be a problem, but they stick shut and then you basically don't have a transmission cooler and your transmission overheats and heat is what kills transmission. So this is a very simple, but very important upgrade to do. And while we're doing it, we might as well do the fluid and the filter and all of that stuff. We're already gonna be draining a lot of it out, so we're gonna just get it all knocked out in one shot. Right, Osway? So there is our transmission cooler thermostat. As you can see, it is about as accessible as it could possibly get. So hopefully a little easy little swamp here. Well, we've got our transmission thermostat bypass fully installed, snazzy looking unit. Pretty easy install, all things considered. They made that about as accessible as it could possibly be. So that's all done and dusted. Now we're going to pull the transmission pan, drain the rest of the fluid out since we already got a good bit out while doing that. Then we can pull the filter out, get that swap, fill it all with fresh fluid, and uh, test it all out, make sure it still works before we hook up to the trailer and start working on the trailer side of things. There's a lot to do there. A lot of stuff we've been meaning to do since before the race season started. It should be pretty satisfying, so I'm excited for that. But first step first, we gotta get the truck ready. Right, Osway? Uh, perfect. 
So we started working on taking the many, many bolts out of the band so we could get this thing off. Unfortunately, unlike some other full-size trucks, there is no drain plug on the transmission pan. So we're gonna have to do the old crack it open, let the fluid go everywhere, and try our best to not make a huge mess process to get this thing off. Now it was siliconed on, so we had to do a little prying, but we managed to get most of it in the drain pan and uh, work our way out. It's definitely annoying to have to do it this way. It's much easier when you can drain it before you remove it, but it's part of it. It's pretty common with these automatic transmissions. So. Once the pan was off, I could pull the <laughs> pickup filter out. It uh, got away from me and made an absolutely huge mess again. All that work trying to not make a mess taking the pan off, and I made a mess taking the filter off, but hey, that's part of it. So once I got that one off, I went ahead and pulled the spin-on one off. This transmission has two filters, the main pickup filter and then the spin-on filter, which is basically a filter for the fluid coming back from the cooler. So got the spin-on one back on, went ahead and put a new pickup O-ring for the pickup filter, got that back in, and then it was time to get the pan ready to go back on. Now, since this pan was RTV'd on, we have to clean all of that off. That is the biggest nuisance with any RTV gasket surface is you've got to clean it every time you remove and reinstall it so I like my gasket surfaces clean, so I take my time, grind it down, and make sure it's like brand new, because any leftover hardened RTV on there is going to potentially prevent this from sealing. So once I got it cleaned off, I went ahead and sprayed it out with the air hose just to make sure we don't have any debris, and then it's time to finally reinstall it. Now this filter kit does come with a rubber gasket, and we decided to go ahead and use it. Now we're running the risk of it potentially leaking RTVs a more kind of surefire way, but if we ever have to remove it, we're gonna be very thankful we went for the rubber gasket because we won't have to clean it all off again. <laughs> Save some time. All right, thermostat bypass on, transmission pan back on, new filters. You can see our old filters were definitely dirty and in need of some replacement. Definitely a good thing to get done while we're here. While we're here, we got a lot of fluid out. Um, I think we're gonna be able to have replaced the majority of the fluid. It's always hard to get all of the fluid out of an auto. Just one of those things is a lot in the torque converter, but doing those lines helps get some more out of the torque converter. So now we gotta fill it with probably about 10 to 12 quarts. So it's gonna take some time and start it up, get everything cycled, make sure it all still works. And hopefully it stops raining when we get hooked up to the trailer. <laughs> rain, rain, go, Don't come again tomorrow for sure, but maybe Sunday, that's okay. <laughs> All right, well, we filled up our transmission fluid. Everything's back together. We are gonna need to check again uh, once everything's warmed up just because when you fill automatic transmission fluid, you fill it through the dipstick tube. So it's gonna be wet for a little while and that could alter your reading. So we'll need to check it when it's full, but I think we're pretty close. Just some, need to do some tweaking on the level. Need to check for leaks. So far so good on that front. Uh, so with that out of the way, transmission stuff is done. Uh, we basically need to get hooked up to the trailer. Now, if you've been following along with this saga, you know we bought this truck, there was one big sacrifice we had to make. We wanted the Mega Cab. The Mega Cab gives you a lot more room inside. Um, you've got more leg room. We can tilt the seats forward like so. And we can store all sorts of stuff behind the seat. We pack our bags and everything back there. And then we've still got plenty of room. It's definitely... <laughs> Definitely been helpful on these long trips with three of us. But with the addition of the Mega Cab comes the sacrifice of the bed. You can only get a Mega Cab with a short bed. So we ran into a problem, which is something we knew about when we bought the truck. It was a sacrifice we were willing to make, but with the gooseneck, it limits our turning radius because the corner of the trailer gets towards real close to the corner of the cab. So we got this offset ball system from Gen Y hitches. So it ties into the two front safety chain hookup spots and then goes in where the ball normally would go and then offsets the ball back 
five inches. So this alone gives us a lot more turning radius. But then we also added an extension to the trailer and between the two of them, we've got it turned pretty far without getting into the cab. So that's nice. Let me show you what that looks like. So normally your hitch comes straight down here. That's where it goes to the ball. This extends it forward. Now this is a temporary solution. This is just a fixed solid deal that offsets at 10 inches. What we have on the way from Gen Y hitch is gonna give us 11 inches of offset, but it's a torsion hitch. So it allows for some give and some flex and some damping between the trailer and the truck and drastically improves ride quality. So two birds, one stone, we needed to extend this back to get better turning radius, but then we're also going to improve the ride quality of the truck and basically the wear and tear on everything. So it makes me feel better about <laughs> having to do it, but this was just a temporary solution for our trip to Jersey slash just until we get that, uh, that one from Gen Y. It's a custom build deal. Uh, they're built to order. So we're waiting on that, but at least this gets us by for now. Uh, so yeah, that being said, we need to get hooked up to this thing and it's raining. It's Florida. glasses yeah. all right well we've got as I said some upgrades to do to the trailer first we need to go test out the truck with the new upgrades in the trailer by taking the vet to our local Orlando Speed World track uh, we need to do some runs in that thing see where it's at before our next big comp once we get back we'll have to clean it out anyway so then we'll go through and knock out the trailer upgrades. I can put it back on now. <laughs> Why don't we take it off? It flew off. You broke it off. Oh, damn. I need uh, a little bit of glue and it'll be good as new. True, panel bond it. I just hadn't been in the trailer since that day. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, we're gonna get back to it. Get this car loaded and we'll uh, go see how the truck is with the new EGT. It's gonna be our first time being able to tow with it in, you know, any bit of aggressive tuning, any bit of tuning at all. So it may be like a whole new truck. We'll find out. All right, well, we're working on getting tires mounted for tomorrow. We're mounting some new tires as well as some scrubs from the different comp weekend. If you don't know the board scrub, just refers to basically a, a tire you've used but still has some life in it. Generally, we take them off at comp because they don't have enough life to last, say, a whole battle or a practice session, um, but we save them for times like this. So anyway, he's working on that, getting those mounted up, and I'm working on throwing an alignment on the car. In a couple of events since I've really done a full alignment on the car. So ironically, the rear was pretty close However, in the front, we had about three quarters of an inch toe in, which is an insane amount, way too much. So I'm curious to see how the car drives now that we've got that dial back in. We really need to add this to our regimen and do this before every single event. Lesson learned, uh, it moved quite a bit. Go ahead and nut and bolt check the car, make sure nothing's gonna fall off on us. So Sway's gonna finish mounting tires. Look at him over there, working hard, hardly working. You decide. <laughs> And then we're gonna get all this stuff put in the trailer so we can test out the truck with all the upgrades. I'm as excited to drive the truck with the trailer as I am to go drifting. It's, it's like a, a means to an end. Can't really have one without the other, so. 
Jibber jabber, back to work. That is loaded up in the trailer. We got tires, we got fuel. We have been blowing through fuel, which means we've been driving it a lot, which is what we need to do to get good and comfortable in it. We're gonna go tomorrow morning to Orlando Speed World. Drive the vet, but mainly to test out the truck and trailer before our next big long trip. So hopefully all is well after our upgrades. We'll see you in the morning. Always a good time. Dude, you see that first installed in spot? <laughs> We did have to run back home <laughs> because I checked the transmission fluid at the gas station and it was a little low. But our temps are all good there. You can see the, the thermostat bypass doing its thing. So normally the thermostat doesn't open until like 174. We're riding around at 162. So it's just cooling the transmission all the time. Um, but yeah, EGTs are good. Everything seems good so far. Comfy. I had my heated seat on for a minute. Oh, we're going. All right, get a little acceleration. So that's about... 10 to 20 percent throttle we're on the first tune we're not on the hot tune so the converter is not locked it's cool this the edge will show you what gear and then it shows you a little lock when the converter's locked so there the converter's locked now i'll give it a little more and then that's fourth gear and then that's fourth gear converter locked yeah that was like a little 20 percent throttle acceleration the only thing is with these diesel trucks like you, tend, you think you're at 10 to 20 percent and then you try to give it more and realize that you're all you're all in but i mean we're that was only like 10 15 pounds of boost so still not working or very hard and now it's cruising so i have it locked down to fifth gear because if not if i let it go it'll be in sixth gear right now at like 1200 rpm so we're at 1750 which is kind of like the minimum you want to be at to really like start getting on it diesel engines don't like being lugged create a lot of high cylinder pressure when you do that but here we are osw orlando speed world oh the sign's gone i forgot about that every time i go to look at the sign it's gone you hear that exhaust break exhaust breaking right to fourth like it literally locked the converter in third and then just was like never mind fourth
Definitely need to work on the transmission tuning side of things. It always feels like I'm gonna hit that fence. See ready third, one and third. Converter locked. Four, fourth converter locked. <laughs> like literally it locked the converter for like two seconds. We made it, we got the car unloaded. We had to do a quick gear change. Fortunately, the gear we had, so with the winner's quick change, each pair of gears is two ratios. If you have the small one on the top and the big one on the bottom, that's one way, and then you can flip it and it's the other way. So the gear that was already in it is the right gear, we just had to flip it. So I almost forgot about that. We went to warm the transmission up. But yeah, we gotta get this thing warmed up. No, uh, we're heading out on the oval first. We've got three pairs of scrubs to use on the oval first to get, get the feel of things and then we'll try to throw a new set on maybe do one or two new sets on the oval if everything's going well and then hopefully do some tandems on the skid pad depending on how things go so we got a full run plan for the day i know i realized i realized okay relax why are you yelling at me stop yelling at me
All right, well, we've killed three scrub sets. They only last about a lap. They start to give up pretty much after the bank. So the car is quick on the bank, but a little slower after the bank. Um, but this is one lap. Uh, but these were pretty smoked. I mean, these were not the best condition scrubs ever anyway. So now we've got a new set on. We're gonna run the same super low pressure, all the grip and see what it do, but I'm really happy. You know, the last time we came here, if you saw that video with this car, I had a bunch of tow gain in the car and I, I wanted to leave the car fully hooked up just to try to learn how to drive it on a fast track hooked up but that setup is something that like pro guys wouldn't really necessarily even run because it makes the car when you have tailgate it makes the car drive forward you have a lot of forward bite as we call it so when you're on the bank it's already the car already wants to drive down the bank so when you put a bunch of forward in it it wants to really drive down the bank uh, so anyway i was struggling with that so now we've been riding the wall it feels like i'm riding the wall from inside the car so i'm, I'm really happy about that the rain's closing in so we had two and a half hours of this private so Try and make the most of it, right, boys? Let's get it. Practice. <laughs> so we're now going out on a brand new set of tires, and the scrubs we have are not very good. So this is going to be, it should be a noticeable amount more grip. And as soon as I tip in for the burnout, I notice a little bit of clutch slip. Now, low RPM, lot of wheel speed, could have been an odd thing, but it's not. We're gonna find out the hard way that there's some serious clutch slip problems going on. So I really didn't want to end the day and waste this new set of tires with these weak bank runs. So I was trying to get at least one good wall ride bank run, but the clutch was not cooperating. As soon as I got after it, it would just slip like crazy. So at this point, as soon as I gave it any bit of throttle in third gear, the clutch would just light off, the car would go straight to rev limiter, and I confirmed that it was the clutch slipping by doing a little bit of foot brake to load it up down the straight, getting, giving it a little throttle, and it just zinged right up. So the clutch is for sure smoked. We've got to replace it. But the skid pad's not as harsh, so maybe we'll let it cool down and try to go do some fun cinder laps over there.
after trying to just baby the clutch just to get through having some fun tandems with my buddy Keegan who I haven't driven with in forever uh, I realized it just wasn't worth it to keep going the clutch was slipping so bad on the run-up and in drift and it was just it was done we were done for the day time to pack it up that it felt like it was like slipping like I'd let off and then it would grab late and then when we did me and Josue were on the road course I was like man is the clutch slipping but it's hard to tell there wasn't a ton of traction so it was like maybe it's just spinning the tires but you can tell kind of the difference usually but it was minuscule did the oval things were going well towards the end of the oval once we put some fresh Nitto 315s on it just as soon as I got into third and it loaded up it would slip grab slip grab um, so we went on the skip pad it was all right for a little while and then uh, just trying to chase, if I had the left foot break at all, it just... Bangs. The moral of the story is the clutch is officially smoked, which again, we knew it was slipping before we came here. Um, we just haven't had time to decide on pick and, and saw a new clutch. So if you know any good clutch companies, uh, let me know. All right, we're gonna we loaded this up. We're gonna close this thing up, and we're gonna uh, see how the truck does on the way home. Did great on the way here, so that's good. See how humid it is, how foggy my glasses are. The AC stays burr. Yeah, it's nice. All right, well, we made it back home from the track. We went ahead and got the car out of the trailer. 
Uh, the truck did great. It's a short trip, so it's not, you know, the best test of the upgrades, but the transmission temps were great. Driving it with some more power was really, really nice, and everything was still happy. Good EGTs, coolant temperatures, transmission temperatures, oil temp, all the temps were good. All the temps. Um, this truck, man, I'm really starting to fall in love with it. It's super comfortable. It's nice. It's, it fits all our stuff. It's, I'm really, really happy with this thing so far. And we've still got more stuff we want to do to it to make it cooler and make it work better. Um, there's always room for improvement. But as it is right now, it's a really, really good setup for what we do. So uh, as I said, we got the car out of the trailer. I was going to start on the trailer stuff, but it rained all day and we're kind of running out of time. There's quite a laundry list of things I want to do to this trailer. We need to get the outside cleaned up. We need to strip everything out of the inside so we can do a deep clean on the inside. We need to kind of completely set the trailer up differently for the program we have now with the vet. Uh, and then we've got some other upgrades to do. So there's a lot to do to the trailer, not enough time to do it. But as of right now, the tow rig setup is still pretty dang dialed, all things considered. So very happy about that. And the vet is still in one piece, which is a really, really nice thing considering, you know, trying to ride the wall on the oval. It's always, uh, it's always a bit risky. So really happy with how this thing's been holding up, how it's been performing. I've been getting more and more comfortable in it. You know, aside from the clutch issue, She's still holding in there strong, fortunately. Knock on wood. Oh, I mean, you know, got to do what you got to do. Uh, but yeah, we need to get that taken care of. Um, it's funny because I actually intended on replacing the disc on this clutch when we put the spare transmission in before Jersey, and Jersey's when it started slipping, so I couldn't get the disc in time. But we're going to switch the setup. I've never really been fond of that small diameter clutch setup for this engine combination. Um, so we're going to, I wanted to change it up anyway. That's just what we had. We used it one of those things. So that being said, I'm not going to jibber jabber your ear off. I'm going to let you go, but let me know what you think of the vet, the driving. Let me know what you think of the tow rig, any upgrades that you would suggest. I mean, I am thinking about maybe long bed swapping it, but that's a pretty hefty project. So I need to look into it a little bit more, maybe some air ride, maybe a different turbo. There's, there's so many ways we can go with this, but for now we're going to end it here. But I do want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to see you next time. we got a lot of cool stuff coming up, but for now that's it. Goodbye.